So is it the MacBook Pro with the M1 chip or the MacBook Air with the M1 chip? Find out which one I'm gonna select right now. Let's go. All right, if you guys have watched my videos, you know one thing. My mic on my camera broke, so I'm using this crazy mic here. Hopefully it sounds okay, and people complained about my last video with the sound, so I do apologize about that. I'm gonna fix this soon. Anyways, what this video is all about is the MacBook Air with the M1 chip and the MacBook Pro with the M1 chip, they're very similar in nature. In fact, I'll show you some examples coming up here of how similar they are. And uh, so it's gonna basically mean like, why would you buy a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro with the M1 chip? What's the differences? Why are there any, are there any differences, number one? So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you the same, and things that are the same with the two, and we'll go through those really quickly. And then I'm gonna show you things that are completely different with the two, and I'm gonna go through those also pretty quickly. And then I have my last one, which is really the main reason why I'm going with what I'm gonna go with, and it's gonna actually be the MacBook Pro. And if I know why I chose the MacBook Pro over the MacBook Air, and it may or may not be right for you, but I think it will be, so stay tuned. Let's go. All right, for price. Now, they're going to be about $300 difference, somewhere in that range. So the M1 MacBook Air is going to be $999. It's going to start in that range. That's where it starts at. And the MacBook Pro, the M1 chip MacBook Pro, 2000, late 2020, is going to be $1299. So there's a difference of $300 there. So what makes up for that cost? Let's go through the similarities first, and we'll just kind of nail them down, and then I'm going to show you why you want to get the MacBook Pro. All right, so number one, they both have the Magic Keyboard, the new keyboard, so don't worry about that. They're both going to have really good keyboards. Number one, so that's not a problem. They're, um, they're both gonna have Touch ID as well, so that's definitely not a problem as well. So on the keyboards, they're basically even. All right, on the CPUs, they have the M1 chip, so they're basically the same there as well. So they're gonna have the same, maybe performance, and we'll get into that in a second, but the same CPU, which is the M1 chip, and uh, they say two to three times faster on Apple's advertising all over the place. What does that mean? Nobody knows, so we'll find out. You know, I had a video on benchmarks, though. They look really promising. Check out that video. It was my last video. Anyways, beyond that, let's keep going. So that's going to be that. Now, GPUs, there's only one little difference that I saw on Apple's website. The Air can come with either a 7-core a GPU or an 8-core GPU, and then the MacBook Pro comes with just 8-core GPUs. They don't give you a lot of details on them, so I'm guessing that's kind of almost a wash there as well. So let's go ahead and just mark that as a wash, too. All right, so the RAM and storage options, it's gonna be like $200 to add another eight gigs of RAM or $200 to upgrade the hard drives on each of those systems. So that's a wash as well. The size of the systems as well, it's basically a wash. They're basically the same exact dimensions, um, except for the tapering on the MacBook Air, if you like that better. The MacBook Air is because of that tapering, it's a little bit less metal. So it's about 2.8 pounds versus three pounds for the MacBook Pro. And then the ports, they still, each of these actually only have two Thunderbolt ports. They got rid of the ones with four on the MacBook Pro for some reason. I mean, that might come out later, which is what I'm guessing. So right now that's a wash as well. They each only have two, so that's a complete wash on both of those systems as well. All right, so the cameras, this is a big, it's a painful spot for me. But the cameras basically are both gonna still be 720p. I don't know what Apple's thinking here. Apple claims that they actually added some software here that's gonna help with the, you know, make the processing better. That's going to be yet to be seen, so I don't know how much better you know 720p can actually get. So at the end of the day, the camera stayed the same and the bezel stayed the same, more or less. So you know those are all the similarities that you can see. And so why would I? Why am I choosing the MacBook Pro? I'm going to give you some reasons here and wait for the last one because it's probably the most important. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So why did I pick the MacBook Pro? Let's start with the kind of the lower things first. Number one, a brighter screen. So it actually the MacBook Pro has 500 nits of brightness and the MacBook Air has only about 400. So you have about a 20% somewhere in that range drop off. It is considerable. As you can see, I'm kind of filming in the dark right now, but hopefully it looks okay out there. Anyways, you can notice a difference for sure on them. So I, I definitely, if you're into the screen brightness and things and you want a really bright screen, MacBook Pro might be a little bit better. This one's a plus for me. I did a video on you know how to use this, but it might be a minus for some people. But the MacBook Pro, you get the touch bar, you know the touch bar that's on it, and the uh, the MacBook Air, you just have physical keys. Again, a lot of people like the physical keys, so I'm, but for me, I'm gonna you know really quickly squeeze this in as a positive, and you get it's a little bit more money you know that you get included in there. I mean that's maybe some of the justification for more money. All right, so on the MacBook Pro, you do get a high dynamic range uh, speakers, which is a little bit different. They're slightly better, and you get a studio quality microphone, which is slightly better than the MacBook Air. So for fidelity, for outcoming and a little bit of incoming uh, sound and what have you, it is a little bit better on the MacBook Pro than the MacBook Air, if that, if that all matters to you. Um, it's going to be good either way, so for a lot of people, this isn't going to make any difference whatsoever. All right. 
Now, the last two ones are the most important, I'm going to tell you here. Number one, well, second to last, I guess, is going to be battery. So it looks like the MacBook Pro, um, which is the one I want to get, is about 18 hours to 20 hours. And then the MacBook Air is going to be about 15 to 17. Now, granted, they're both about, you know, uh, way better than they used to be. And it's, you know, if you went with the earlier version like I did, it got suckered into buying something in 2020, the early 2020, not these late 2020s, and my battery is way worse than either of these. So it doesn't matter. But they're, but if I'm going to buy one and battery is really important, I want to do the 18 to 20, and that's worth maybe 100 or 200 bucks more. So I'm going to go with the MacBook Pro. All right, and then finally, the number one reason, and I think it's something that everyone should consider without doubt, is there's actually a passive cooling in the MacBook Air, no fan, and dynamic or active cooling in the MacBook Pro. So the MacBook Pro does have a fan. Now they're saying that the M1 chips don't need to be cooled the same way as the Intel CPUs, but let's think about this now. It's gonna be a little bit thicker case as far as the casing. It does have a fan in the MacBook Pro, and the MacBook Air doesn't. So the way it's always worked out is, you know, obviously they can benchmark. You saw my video, you know, go check that video on benchmarks. They benchmark really close, very, very close together. But the MacBook Air might actually get hot at one point, depending on what you're doing, and throttle down, where the MacBook Pro with that fan kicking on could actually make it be fast all the time. So that's my number one reason. If you're into, like, video editing or all type of hard, hard work, you probably want that fan, whether it's worth the extra 300 bucks, if you can, you know, you have to add all that other stuff I put in there as well, that's going to be up to you. I mean, obviously you got to make that decision. They're so close this year that it, you know, those are really the only differences. So anyways, I hope this video helps everyone out there. I try to make videos like this all the time, maybe two or three times a week. And if you guys can subscribe and just, just help me out, I can make more of these. I try to make different content than most people out there. And as you can see, I'm not a professional, but I do like doing it. So talk to you soon. I stole this from uh, someone that's pretty famous, but anyways, peace.